Hello everyone, Dave Landry here from DaveLandry.com. This is Trading Simplified, episode 35. Wow, every week I go to do the show, I'm like, don't say what episode it is and get all excited, but I tell you, it is exciting. I can't believe we've done 34 of these shows so far. All right, what are we talk about? Well, let's continue our discussion on what's standing between you and your longer-term success. And I did add that longer-term success in sort of after the fact a few weeks back. And the reason I did that was because a lot of people were having a lot of short-term success. And unfortunately, and I wasn't being shot on Friday, but unfortunately I knew that would probably come to an end. And for many, it has. And in one case, it's, it's not so good. But we'll get to that in just one second. So this is part four, Serious Life or Death Business. I want to follow up with the mystery charts, give you a new one. In fact, I might even reveal the name of it. By the way, housekeeping, I do take requests. Is something you want me to cover? Let me know. I have an agenda probably for the next six to eight weeks. But if there's something that I can cover quickly, I'll be happy to jump in and do it. All right, where to find me? So if you want the slides from this show and all the prior sh shows, which includes everything that I discuss, fully disclosed, there's nothing secret to what I do. I reveal it all. Go to davelander.com slash stock charts. You'll get the slides to this show, every show prior. And I'll also send you a bunch of stuff to keep you busy for a long time and give you all three of my books free of charge. If you do need to get in touch with me, davelander.com slash contact. I've been doing these bear market updates, and I'm thinking about changing the bear to bull, especially with the NASDAQ banging out new highs. Maybe it's a little too soon for us to start kissing each other just yet. But if you get a chance, check those out on my website. I think you'll enjoy going through the process of going from bull to bear and then maybe back to bull again. In fact, we're 100% long as far as longs versus shorts in the portfolio now. And I'll touch upon some of those things in just one second. Now, before we do all that, they're here. Almost. <laughs> My indicator should be ready within days, not weeks. And I'm pretty excited about that. And that's on the new ACP platform. And I don't have a name with them for them yet, I should say. So let's just call them Dave Landry. Stick with the trend indicators until we can come up with something a little bit better. Now, sneak peek, one of my favorite indicators. Of course, every indicator is my favorite, but this is one of my favorite, is the Landry Light. And I talked to the programmers a couple days ago, and I mentioned the fact that they weren't available at EMA, and that's something I've been experimenting with quite a bit, Landry Light with an exponential moving average, as I'll show you here. And it's a pretty neat tool, and I've been having a lot of fun with it, and I've been doing a lot of intraday research, which I'll get to in just one second, at least touch upon that. But Landry Light just tells you when the lows are greater than the moving average. In this case, one of my favorite moving averages is a 30-day exponential moving average. And you can see, again, lows are greater here. And it stays green as long as lows are greater than moving average. Now, if the lows are greater than moving average, as a general statement, and Tarzan speak, that's good. Okay? Now, if the highs are less than the moving average like we saw throughout this little bear spill we had in Tarzan speak, that's bad. And then of course, since April, we've had mostly green and no red whatsoever. We had a few intersections with the moving average, which causes the Landry Light indicator to go back to zero, but that's okay. And in Tarzan speak, that's good. Now, all kidding aside, when it comes to trading, two things. One, I believe in keeping it simple and first just eyeball the chart and is it going up, is it going down, is it going sideways? And two, if you are going to use some indicators, see them as illustrators to help you see more clearly what's actually happening in the chart. For instance, since April, again, we've had mostly upside Landry Light and the exponential moving average has headed higher. So that's certainly a good thing. And don't complicate it. It's either good or it's bad, or in the case of a market chopping back and forth, it would be indifferent. Now, also included 10% buy line, which is great for longer term market timing and possibly some short term research. And that's something that I've kind of noodled with here and there, and that'll make a lot more sense once I do a show on the indicators themselves, or if you go back a few weeks, I did kind of touch upon these things. Percent from closing high is made to use with the above to help to know when the market might be in trouble or if, if it's just doing 
just fine. My bow tie template, which is a 10 simple, 20 exponential, and 30 exponential. And that'll definitely help to keep you on the right side of the market and also let you know when a new trend might be beginning. Go in and watch the show we did on bow ties for a lot more of that. Also, one thing we added kind of last minute is proper order, meaning the 10 greater than 20 greater than 30 or the 10 less than 20 less than 30 for downtrends. And if those three are in proper order, either up or down, the indicator will show you on the chart. And if they're not, it won't have one or the others, which would suggest the market is just chopping around. And that's pretty important, believe it or not. Everybody focuses on the trends and gets all excited. But sometimes the best thing to do is sit on your hands. And that'll flesh that out when we get around to talking about the indicators after they're introduced to everyone. And I also have one of my favorite volatility measurements, which is great for a lot of stuff. And volatility is beyond the scope of this particular show today. But we'll touch upon that in the future, and I'll be able to show you that indicator on the chart. Now, you're probably thinking, geez, how much, Dave? How much? Well, it's free. There is one caveat, though. As mentioned previously, Tarzan is not included. Now, all kidding aside, seriously, Tarzan is not included. <laughs> now, the indicators are free. The only caveat is two things. One, I ask you to continue to support StockCharts.com. And two, I am not compensated for my presentations. So I would ask that you visit my website. And if you like what you see, support me via my website and that allows me to keep doing these shows and stock charts obviously staying in business keeps me doing these shows also so support stock charts and davelander.com all right let's hop into the mystery chart this was a mystery chart from last week this is ubx it did trigger i do still think it has potential if you're looking to get in on this here were our parameters entry at 920 initial profit target at 7 and a protective stop at 770 remember we could be wrong on any trade notice it made a really nice cup type of pattern and then it began to rally from lows and then it began to accelerate higher in that trend big blue arrows as you can see pretty obvious on the chart it pulled back which formed a bit of a tko but i would call that more of a pullback but it did a bit of a tko you might recognize in there from one of our earlier shows it has triggered and so far eh, hasn't done a whole lot but I think it still has potential our initial profit target again at 11 up here and a protective stop down here at 770 so we'll see how it shakes out now this week I'm gonna give you a new one and if you want to see all of these charts I will never show you and will never say never but all of these mystery charts right come directly from my trading service and there's 0% hindsight in these. I know a lot of people cherry pick things and show you how great they are. I think that's BS. Show me ahead of time and then let's see what happens, good, bad, or indifferent. But if you do want to see the archives of all of these picks going back for many, many years, a decade or so, go to davelearner.com slash archives. It'll bring you a page that looks like this and just click on the date that you're interested in. In. And I updated this just yesterday, so I'm about a week or so behind on that. Obviously, I don't put the newest setups in there because uh, out of courtesy, I should say, to my clients. Now, this IPO took off and has pulled back rather deeply, which is a pattern that I follow. I call it a first deep replacement retracement in IPO. Entry is here, stop is here, and the initial profit target is up here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and reveal this one since it triggered yesterday. And the stock symbol is ZI, ZI, Zulu Indigo. It's a little IPO and a biotech. All right, let's get back to that trading psychology thing we were talking about, peeling that onion on trading psychology. And the more you learn about trading psychology, the better your life gets. And a few weeks ago, we talked about how trading is easy, and a lot of people had a lot of initial success because you had a 30% tailwind behind you. And that's great, and I'm glad everybody did really well going in, but the problem is it's not always that good. And sometimes that could be a really harsh reality. Unfortunately, as we'll see in a minute, it could be a really harsh reality. And we talked about how we're not made to trade. We sort of touched upon psychology 
And we still have neurology, self-discovery, cognizant of bad behaviors, commitment to commitment devices, and then the sort of the holy grail, and that's an overused word, but brutally honest, process-oriented postmortems. And that'll make a lot of sense as we get further and further along. Now, a couple of random thoughts and recap. One thing I've been harping on for weeks now is you don't know what you don't know if you're new to trading. And the question is, do you want to be a trader for now or do you want to be a trader for life? And I would hope you want to be a trader for life. I'm glad everybody's hopping in on their phone apps and getting into trading, but there's a lot you don't know. And I want to get everybody up to speed and learn how to think like a trader. And I'm skipping ahead, but it's something I said last few weeks. To think like a trader, you just have to remember you're trading traders and not markets. And that's a big difference from picking what you think is a good stock or a good company and things that make sense. Now, one thing that you don't know is your risk. Now, I don't want to Karen you. Now, Karen is not of the Karen memes, but Karen is actually my wife's friend. And she has a really bad habit of telling a gruesome story right before the entree is served. I'll give you one example, which started the whole quote unquote caring, caring in you. That's hard to say. She talked about a story about a little girl and under her house got bit by a snake. She died. Her brother went to check her out. He got bit by a snake. He died. The father went underneath the house to see what's going on. He got bit by a snake. He died. The mother went out there, under there. She died. The grandma, I don't know if the grandma made it there or not, but let's just assume the grandma went under the house and got bit by a snake too. So she gets to, through telling the story and we're all kind of looking at her. <laughs> and then she goes, all right, everybody ready for the meatloaf? Anyway, so on a serious note, I don't want to bum you out, but by now you've probably heard of this. A 20-year-old Robin Hood trader kills himself after seeing a minus $730,000 balance on a $16,000 account. This should not have happened. And the irony in all this is that his loss wasn't nearly that bad, if I'm understanding it correctly. And this, the details are still coming out. He put on put spreads and he didn't really fully understand what he was doing. And he was probably successful at it for a while until this happened. And what happened is the puts got exercised and he had to come up with $730,000. But the $730,000 was not for naught, if that's the right way of saying that. He would have received probably about $725,000, maybe a little more, give or take, in Amazon stock for that. So he probably would have only lost a few thousand dollars on his account and would still be solvent. So it's a very sad situation and it's a bit of a bummer. And this is this really dovetails nicely into although I wish it didn't happen obviously but but it really dovetails into what I've been saying lately about you don't know what you don't know. In this case this poor gentleman did not know his risk and it's incredibly sad because obviously if he's interested in trading at 20 years old, he's probably serious about his future and looking to do some wonderful things. Unfortunately, he just got he got a little out of control with this and he didn't realize that the loss wasn't really that bad, but it was probably not good, but he could have survived if he just would have waited a day or so and let things shake out. Now, as I often say, money management will cure a multitude of sins. And one thing that you might not know is what exactly are your risk? Now, we've talked about money management quite a bit in the past. So go in and watch those videos. And then also I did a complete module just on money management and some other modules that are kind of indirectly correlated and that'll make sense in just one second. But the bottom line is you want to risk 2% per trade if stopped out. That's, that doesn't mean that you invest 2% of your account. You just say, okay, where's my stop and how much would I lose if that stop got hit? I want to lose no more than 2%. And by the way, if you're newer to trading, maybe risk a half a percent and work yourself up to that 2% number. And at that 2% number, you could still lose a lot of money because the market could gap against you and you could lose a lot more than 2%. But as a general statement, you should be able to live another day. 
He who fights and runs away lives to fight another day. Now, we take partial profits. We take half the position off when the reward is greater than equal to initial risk. That's one for one. Systems designers may say that that has what's called a negative expectancy. It does not because we are looking to make an unlimited amount of money on the remainder of the position. By the way, you want to be successful longer term, make sure that your losses are limited and your potential gains are unlimited and not just the opposite as this poor gentleman found out so painfully. And it's just, it really bums me out when I start to talk about it. So let's keep moving on here. But anyway, once you do take that initial profit target, you want to move your stop up to break even. And that way you're sort of free rolling, so to speak. I hate to use the word playing with the market's money, but that's kind of the idea behind doing that. And then we're going to allow, we're going to allow that stop to gradually open up to the longer term volatility to capture the occasional home run. Go in and watch as many of shows as you can stand where I talk about what happens with the mystery charts longer term. And that's the whole idea with the money management to catch that occasional and very important home run. Now, money management is an important piece. And you really can't talk about money management without talking about trading psychology and the methodology. And you can't talk about the methodology without money management and the mind or trading psychology. And you can't talk about trading psychology without those other two either. So obviously, if this gentleman would have known about money management and understood money management and known his risk, then he wouldn't have ended up in the horrible predicament that he did. So work to know what you don't know. And I have modules on all of these and also have what I call holistic trader, which pulls all three together. It's a little bit of psychology, a little bit of methodology, and a little bit of money management all together. And by the way, I'm often asked if my money management is psychological or statistical, and my answer to that is yes. Not to go all freshman psychology on you, but the shorter term profit taking takes care of those immediate gratification type of needs. Low down on that Maslow's hierarchy, right above Wi-Fi, I think is where it is, and maybe a little bit above air and shelter. And then the longer term trend following helps you to reach that self-actualization and realization towards the top of the ladder. And that's something that we've covered before. But just an FYI, money management will cure a multitude of sins and will also help you tremendously with your trading psychology. Now, I can't guarantee much in this business, but I think I'm 100% sure on this one. You'll be smarter in the future. And again, that's one of the few things I can guarantee. One thing that really amazed me in the mid 90s, I was blessed in being able to work with a trader who had been trading for a long, long time. And after about six or eight weeks of working with him, one thing that I was amazed at was how much better I saw him become. And that really excited me knowing that if I stuck with this for a long time, I too would get smarter and smarter and smarter. And it was just amazing how much better he became over such a short period of time. Now, I'll give you a more relevant and closer example. Case in point, I'm smarter than I was less than two weeks ago. So here we have on the bottom the Landry Light Indicator. Notice that it's red, and this is a five-minute S&P chart. And this is straight from ACP. I did a capture on that. And you could see that it stayed red for the entire day. And there's a 30-day EMA. Now, obviously, the EMA takes a little while to catch up the price. But you kind of get the idea because you don't have 30 periods coming into the day. But what's interesting is you can see this market had a little bit of a rally. But then imploded for the rest of the day. So you could argue after the sideways trading and here that the EMA pretty much had caught up to price. So this downside Landry light was certainly relevant after let's say about an hour and a half or so of trading. Now I got sucked in because I was anxious to get long. This is when the futures were getting whacked pre-market. 
the other day. And like an idiot, I got in way too early. And you could see the market just pretty much, after a little bit of chopping around, did nothing but go down the rest of the day. This was a very expensive mistake. I'm not going to tell you how much it cost me just in case my wife watches this presentation. But I can tell you this. I dropped more than one F-bomb based on this. Now, while I was doing a little research and playing around with these new little indicators, which I think are awesome, especially because they're free in the ACP platform, I looked at the cash S&P. That prior chart was the spiders. I looked at the cash S&P, and I noticed that cash never did take out its five-minute high. Had I paid attention to cash, I likely would not have taken that trade in the spiders. And then again, there was no upside Landry light the entire day. And this is what really aggravates me. I was doing some other research this morning looking for these wide range bar down where the market opens at one end of its range and ends at the other. And that is a godsend for a trader. I should have made 10 times the amount of money I lost on this particular day. And that's that really has me kicking myself in the buttocks. This quote came to mind. Learn from the mistakes of others. You can't live long enough to make them all yourself. And I think a trading corollary to that is in trading, learn from the mistakes of others. You won't have enough money to make them all yourself. So that one little thing I just showed you, learn from that. Learn that I got a little anxious to get in the market instead of watching watching and waiting for a more liberal entry. And as I'm going live here, I'm thinking, well, how, how what's an easy way to learn from the mistakes of others? Well, I have an unfair advantage because I have answered probably a hundred and something thousand emails over the years. I have carpal tunnel on both hands. I just had cubital tunnel surgery on one elbow and I might have to do the other elbow if I'm not careful. And then multiple carpal tunnel sin, uh, syndrome surgeries. So I've spent a lot of time answering a lot of emails and interacting with a lot of people. So I have an unfair, unfair advantage. I see a lot of mistakes being made. And sometimes I'll get an email and it reminds me not to make that mistake on the current day that I'm trading. Now, I was thinking as I'm going live, again, how could you be able to see the mistakes of others or certainly learn from many others and avoid a lot of mistakes and one way would be to get involved in some sort of forum. I have a forum in Facebook. You have to be a gold member, and that's to keep the riffraff out. I'm half kidding, but, <laughs> you know, a lot of these forums sometimes can go a little crazy. But learn from the mistakes from others. Get to know other traders. And trading can be a really lonely sport. And I think it's important to talk with other traders. And, you know, I don't want to harp on this poor gentleman, but if this guy could have talked with some other people and said, look, I did this and now I owe seven or $30,000. What am I, what can I do? What am I do? Somebody else would have said, hey, look, dude, chill out. You're not going to owe that much money. You probably have maybe a two to $5,000 loss on your hands. You're, you're going to live the fight another day. I know that's a bad choice of words. And the reason that's in my head is because the old hedge fund adage that I preach is, he who fights and runs away lives to fight another day. Knowing what you don't know, you want to learn as much as possible so you don't make as many mistakes. And simple things like I've showed you previously, today, and in other episodes, like, are you on the right side of the trend? Is the market trending? Is the market chopping around? Do you have a setup? Do you have an entry? Lots of things like that will help you from making a lot of mistakes. Now, one thing I've been meaning to talk about is you need to eventually get off of your phone and on to the screen. And by the screen, I mean stockcharts.com. Look at some charts. Look at short-term charts. Look at longer-term charts. There's a lot of things that you might not be seeing, like overhead supply in a setup. And sometimes you'll see a beautiful setup and then right above it is a big mound of overhead supply. What did I say earlier? We're trading traders, not markets. That big mound or range of overhead supply, that trading range, is traders. There's a lot of traders that might be looking to dump their position on top of you as soon as it begins to rally. And I will get into these as time allows, these type of things such as proper 
stock selection in future episodes. But for the most part, you want a very obvious setup, you want good trim, and you want no overhead supply. You do those three things and you're well on your way. So you want to pick the best, leave the rest. I spent 14 hours in a course talking just about that, how to pick the best stock. So obviously beyond a 30 minute quick little brief presentation here, but focus on learning how to pick the best stocks. Now, one thing I would urge you to do is just trade small. You're only going to be smarter in the future. That's one of the few things I can guarantee. I made some stupid mistakes a week and a half ago, and I was not trading small, truth be told. So I'm a little aggravated, obviously, with that. But hopefully, I won't make that same mistake again. Make sure what you're doing is conceptually correct. Don't throw a bunch of indicators on a chart. Use one or two indicators. I have some cool little stuff I'm pretty excited about. Use one or two of those. For the most part, make sure you look at the chart. Make sure it's conceptually correct. Conceptually correct means you're trading with the trend. You're not fighting trends. Learn what conceptually correct means. And keep it simple, okay? Something like trend knockouts, one of our earlier shows, can be a wonderful setup. You won't get them every day. I just updated an article for a magazine in Europe called Traders, and I really had a hard time finding a trend knockout. There just weren't a whole lot around. I think in more recent times there's been a few, but when I had to update it, I just couldn't pull one out the air. So one thing I'd recommend, maybe pullbacks. Maybe you could do something like pullbacks to the EMA, Landry Light pullbacks, something like that. Study that 30-day EMA if you need something to kind of quantify your trend and look to trade pullbacks after the market pulls back to the 30 day EMA. And then I can't emphasize this enough, trend, 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 use all the things I kind of mentioned here, such as bow tie proper order, Landry light, and above all, just eyeball the market and see if it's going up, down, or sideways. Now, one thing I woke up this morning thinking about is you really have to get the reps in. If you've been trading for just a few months, unfortunately, you don't know what you don't know. And I'm going to expound upon this in future shows, but you really need to go through a variety of conditions, uptrends, downtrends, and sideways markets. Everybody seems like a genius in a bull market. Don't confuse brains with a bull market. It's when things get a little choppy or roll over that separates the men from the boys. So make sure you trade through a variety of markets. And let's not forget, you're trading traders, not markets. And one way to wrap your head around this, as I think I've said ad nauseum, is to be cognizant of your own emotions. And by the way, you can't make any decisions without emotions. If you didn't have any emotions, you'd be dead in a day or you'd be institutionalized, so you wouldn't be dead in a day. So we're not made to be emotionless creatures. We're very emotional and every every decision has a consequence. And I'll explain that in future shows. It also has an emotions involved. But being cognizant of your emotions and your trading and why you're trading and why you might exit a trade or why you busted your, tr your plan might help to wrap your head around the fact that there's a lot of other people that are emotional out there. So if you can keep your cool, you are able to capitalize on the emotions of others. Okay, boy, that went quick. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions, daylighter.com slash contact. Leave a comment below this video. I read them all, and in many cases, I answer them all. If you need some follow-up information, want the slides from this presentation and all prior presentations, my three books and some introductory material to trading, including limited access to my members area, go to davelander.com slash stock charts. I want to thank everybody for watching and may the trend be with you. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.